Good morning. morning. We're so glad you're here to worship with us this morning, those who are here in person and those who are worshiping online with us this morning as well. Take a moment to wave and see those around you this morning in worship. That's you can wave, you got it. Hello, good morning. Also, if you are online with us on Facebook or YouTube, please take a moment and say hello as well and leave us your name. There are a number of announcements in your bulletin this morning. I want to lift up just a few for you this morning. Our Disciple Women's Ministries is hosting a garden party on Saturday, June 25th at 10 a.m. on the uh, front lawn of the Rippy House. There's a whole lot more information inside your bulletin about that. That's an amazing time. I hope that you all will come and join them for that. If you are um, part of our board, we meet next Sunday, May 15th at noon. So please put that on your calendar and please plan to attend. Also, our youth invites you to a trivia night. We are hosting a trivia night for our last fundraiser for Costa Rica. There are forms like this at both doors. It is Friday, May 20th from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, I found out this week that you can have a team of up to six. It doesn't have to be four. If you want to add a couple people, so you have a couple more ringers inside of that, uh, but you could add a couple of extra if you'd like. But we are hoping for 15 teams, and we've got seven right now. So we need eight more teams. This is a great chance to invite neighbors and friends and non-church people to come in and enjoy a really fun night of trivia with us on Friday, May 20th at 7 p.m. There are other announcements in your bulletin this morning. Please take time to read those and let us do a Mother's Day recognition. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the sabbatical committee and the congregation here at First Christian Church, um, I would like to have Mike stand. (laughs) Put him on the spot a little bit. (laughs) Mike is getting ready to begin his sabbatical journey mid-July through mid-October. And on behalf of the congregation, we wanted to extend this love offering to Mike. Uh, to help support his trip, trips, his time away, and his renewal with God. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Keith. Today we celebrate and honor all that is good about Mother's Day. For many, Mother's Day is a day of many different emotions. Joy, sorrow, regret, grief, thankfulness, and more. It is a time of celebration, but for some, a time of lament. And today, we want all women to feel welcome, appreciated, seen, and needed within the body of Christ. So I want to share on this Mother Day words written by Amy Young, who writes a blog entitled, The Messy Middle, Where Grace and Truth Abide. As Amy puts it, these words are for the wide spectrum of motherhood. To those who have given birth, we celebrate you. To those who have lost a child, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, Fraught with pokes and prods, tears and disappointments, we walk with you. And forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make it harder than it is. And to those who are foster moms, mentor moms, adoptive moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. 
to those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who have lost their mothers, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who live through driving tests and medical tests and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. And to those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. And to those who are step-parents, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who will have emptier nests in the coming year, we rejoice with you and we grieve with you. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, please know that we walk with you. That mothering is not for the faint of heart and we have real warriors in our midst. We remember you and give thanks this day. For the last several days, or last several years, in honor of both Mother's and Father's Day, we have made Kiva loans to support mothers and fathers trying to support their families. Give a look and listen to this video about Kiva. People around the world work hard every day. Magpairam, recibe su dinero, repeat. Today we acknowledge that we have made two Kiva loans in honor of Mother's Day. The first is for Lema. Lema, who appears in this photo, is a wonderful young girl who tries her utmost to make her family live a decent life. She is a 25-year-old mother of one adorable kid living with her family in a village near Jenin, West Bank. Her husband works in construction where it's a hard job and needs lots of effort. Lema works in sewing in order to help her husband with the family expenses. She turned to Palestine for credit and development to request a loan to buy a sewing machine, thread, silk, and fabrics for her work. This will improve her production and enhance her income. The second is Miriam. Miriam is a mother of five children, four of which are in school. She has been making couscous from yarns for more than from yams for more than six years. She is on her 11th loan cycle and has already repaid most of those. She is taking a new loan to buy bags of cassava paste for the production of couscous, which will increase her sales and income. She expects to use the profits of her business and also be able to look after her children. 
She reminds everyone still to take care because of COVID-19. We honor these two hard-working mothers as we support them in their journey. We have probably been doing this for 10 plus years, and it's not just Mother's Day and Father's Day, but we go in from time to time and make other loans, which our account has grown as it has been repaid back. And in all of that time, there has only been one default on our loan, and that was because the man's cow died because of disease. Incredible. We give God thanks for all the mothers in this world. Come, children, God is calling us, gathering us, covering us with hope-filled wings. Come, children, rest against our beloved's breast, nurtured and nourished on the milk of love and kindness. Come and worship knowing God's loving arms are wrapped around us in all times and places. Come, children, knowing this time is a time for us to truly respond in praise and prayer. Let us stand for our opening hymn.
We are here to celebrate life. We have gathered out of reverence for the wonder of new life and new beginnings. The mystery that is love and the glory that is God. We acknowledge the mystery of the God that is within us, working through us and in us. We stand in awe of that mystery. Today we rejoice with Bob and Casey Hansen and big brothers Tyler and Kaysen in embracing Aiden with open arms, even as Jesus welcomed little children with words of blessing. We acknowledge God's abounding love already at work in Aiden and come together in covenant to nurture him into fullness of life. This service of presentation and dedication is a visible sign of the grace and presence of God's love and spirit. Let's hear these words of Scripture from Mark chapter 10. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for to such as these the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. He took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. Well, Casey and Aiden and Bob, come on down. And little brothers, too, if they'd like to. Morning, guys. How are you all? Stand right there. Good morning, buddy. How are you? All right. You all can answer this too, Casey and Tyler, and I'm going to ask your, your mama, Casey. So your love and bringing Aiden into the family, caring for his needs, and in showing him love and affection is already evident, isn't it? Do you promise before God and this community of faith to do your best to raise Aiden as a child of God in a Christian home? Will you, as parents and big brothers, promise to pray for and with Aiden? Will you tell him stories of faith? Will you promise to share with him the Christian community so that we might support you and your family and help love, nurture, and teach him in the way of faith? Will you nurture him in body, mind, and spirit so that his gifts may glorify God and God's love for the world through Jesus Christ? Do you promise to? Casey, do you promise to? Yeah. Good awesome. job. Good job. Good job. Congregation, raising a child is not done in a vacuum, it is a shared responsibility. The home, the church, the school, the community. Today, you, the church, have a sacred calling. It is your sacred responsibility, along with parents of this child, to enfold him in the sheltering arms of the church. As a family of faith, will you participate in God's blessing of him and the dedication of his parents by promising to support them in the years ahead with your prayers, with your love, with specific acts of caring and nurture? With, With God's, God's help, help, we, we will. will. Now let us come to give a blessing to Aiden Clay Hansen. Hi, buddy. Oh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Oh. Oh, goodness. Look at all these fun people. You know some of these back here. Yeah. Looky here. Look at those nice people. Smile at them. And over there, fine, aren't they? Yeah. Don't you love his bow tie? <laughs> okay, we'll go back. We'll go back. But you know, all of these people are going to love you and care for you 
Yeah. Oh, goodness. I know, I'm a scary old man. It's okay. It's okay. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks for new life, especially for the life of Aiden, for the wonderful family that you have blessed him to be a part of, for his parents, for his brothers, for his grandparents, for his aunts, for his cousins. Oh, Lord, continue to surround him with this congregation's love as well. May we support he and all of his dear family now and all the days of his life. For we pray your blessing upon this dear one through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Don't leave yet. In our service of dedication, we give a rose. You want to hold it? Good job. The rose symbolizes the meaning of dedication. Whether a flower is beautiful or not, whether it comes in full bloom or not, whether it fulfills itself as a flower or not, depends upon the nurture it receives. No flower grows alone apart from the sunshine and the rain, apart from the soil in which it lives. So too, no child grows alone. May the rose then be a reminder of the beauty of fulfillment and the reward which comes from love and understanding, from teaching and example, from raising this child in the ways of God. And you will be supported by this wonderful group of people. Let us share together our unison prayer. God, our creator, we thank you for the gift of this child entrusted to our care. May we be patient and understanding, ready to guide and to forgive, so that through our love he may come to know your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless you all. Bless you. Bye. up for children's blessing as we sing children welcome <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you all today? Are you good? So, we got a lot of exciting things going on in our church right now, don't we? Do we? Did you see the baby? Yes. We saw something happen with Aiden what, and his family. What, what was that that happened right before this? Do you all know what that was? Aside of probably making it feel longer, it's called a dedication. Do you know what a dedication is? I love you. It is what we just did. It is. <laughs> but even more than that, it is. It's a commitment. It's a covenant. It's a promise that parents make to their children to help raise them. Ow, did you hurt yourself? There you go. To raise them in a Christian home, to pray with them, to talk about the stories of God with them. And did you hear how I asked Tyler and Kaysen if they were going to do the same thing? Yeah, yeah. And then Jim asked all of the congregation if we would do the same thing, if we would help to 
raise up Aiden and tell him the stories of God and say prayers for him. And I think a lot of you might have had that happen in this congregation, and maybe some of you haven't, but I know that either where you came from or what you did also promises to pray and raise up. Look behind you, look at all those people back there. You see them all? You see all those people back there? I know it's hard to keep your eyes off Aiden. He is cute as can be. But all those people out there have promised to pray for you, to love you, to encourage you in your faith and tell you the stories of God. One of the ways that we're gonna do that is by going to worship and wonder. <laughs> I'm sorry. Worship and wonder. Um, today, children's worship and wonder is second grade and under. And Reese is gonna take you all up these stairs here in just a minute. And then third grade and up is gonna go with Miss Sandy out this door and you're gonna hear the stories of God so you can share them with one another and with all those people out there and with Aiden, okay? Let's pray. God, thank you so much for babies that bring us joy and laughter and fun and thank you for all the children of this church and all the adults as we share your stories with one another and grow in our faith and all god's children said amen all right let's see i did such a great thing Good morning and happy Mother's Day. Mother is defined as a noun to be a woman in relation to her children or child. It is also defined as a verb to bring up a child with care and affection. And this year it means so much more to me. Some of you may know that three years ago after being married for only two months, my husband and I brought home a six day old baby girl from the hospital. Now, I have always wanted to be a mother, but I do not believe that it is in the cards for me for it to happen naturally. We took on this new endeavor and quickly fell in love with this perfect baby, as many of you did. If it hadn't been for our families and our church family, we could not have done it. We didn't know how long we would be able to keep her or if we would have to give her back. We prayed daily that she would complete our family and one day be our own. Paisley grew over the next three years during a pandemic and became her own sassy self. Some say she, they remind, she reminds them of me. On April 26, 2022, she became our newest Wilson as we were able to complete her adoption. Being a mother is the most difficult yet rewarding job that I have been able to have and I thank God every day that God made me her mama. Today, as we celebrate our mothers, whether they are biological, adopted, surrogate, or just the woman that we can relate to, may you know that God gave you her and she should be celebrated. I am thankful for my mama and all the women in my life who I can strive to be like. As we get ready to collect our tithes and offerings, you can give to our diaconates as they come down the aisle. You can use our push pay app or mail to the church office. Let us receive our tithes and offerings.
Our prayer today comes from the Reverend Hannah Cardin, pastor of Elston Avenue United Methodist Church. It is titled, To the Moms Who Are. Please pray with me. To the moms who are struggling, to those filled with incandescent joy, to the moms who are remembering children who have died and pregnancies that miscarried, to the moms who decided other parents would be a better choice for their babies, to the moms who adopted those kids and loved them fiercely, to those experiencing frustration and desperation in infertility, to those who knew they never wanted kids and the ways they have contributed to our shared world, to those who mothered colleagues, mentees, neighborhood kids, and anyone who needed it, to those remembering moms no longer with us, to those moving forward from moms who did not show love or hurt those who should have cared for. Today is a day to honor the unyielding love and care for others we call motherhood. Wherever we have found it and in whatever ways we have found to cultivate it within ourselves. In God's name we pray, amen. As we come to our time of prayer, we come continuing the promise that we made to Aiden this day, that we will surround one another and support one another in all the times of our lives. So this morning, we lift up Tammy Crick, who had back surgery on Wednesday that went very well. She is now home recuperating. We also lift up Melissa Gash, who had several surgical procedures on Friday that went well, and she is home recuperating. We continue to remember Christy Bergen as she continues to heal from her recent back surgery. She says things are progressing, but slowly. We also lift up Edna McDowell, who is the sister of Nancy Birdwhistle on her way back from her time in Florida. She fell in a motel and busted a shoulder, and now both shoulders are in need of repair. And we remember Edna and you as well, Nancy, this day. We also continue to remember Blanche York. She had a great 105th birthday celebration on Tuesday. But we continue to keep her in our prayers as she is under hospice care. And there are many others who are on our hearts and in our minds who we wrap in our love this day. Let us go to God in prayer. Loving God, you knit us together in our mother's womb and breathe us into being. Thank you for the gifts of life, of love, and of care that come from you. Wrapped in our mothers and stepmoms, in our adopted moms, in our grandmothers, in our great-grandmothers, daughters, sisters, aunts, and so many others who have been a mother to us. Merciful God, gather us all to the safety of your breast. For many this day, it's a day of joy and celebration, but for others, it's an especially painful day. So, Mothering God, grant us the grace to let you be our parent. Help us to rely on your wisdom to figure things out, to heal what is broken, bear our burdens, tend to our hearts. Gather us under your wings and hold us to your warmly beating breast. Let our souls be quieted as weaned children resting in the arms of their mother. And God of seaside breakfast, you know the way out of our messy lives. So take us by the hand and lead us. Help us to wipe our busy schedules off our calendars so we may spend more time with those who need our love and attention. Challenge us to fish from the other side of our worries so we may pull in all the grace, wonder, and mercy offered to us by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And help us to lift glad songs of joy for all the blessings that God has given to us. Help us to offer our hearts and hands in love and service to others 
even as Jesus did. We offer this prayer in his holy name. Amen.
Thank you, Jane. Isn't there something so peaceful and so soothing about a harp? Thank you for sharing this day. Today we continue in the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. Today beginning with verse 36. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. And at that time she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. And since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him in the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put them all outside of the room, and he knelt down and he prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. And then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. This is the word of God for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Calm us now, O Lord, into a quietness that heals and listens. Open wounded hearts to the balm of your word. Speak to us in clear tones so that we might feel our spirits leap for joy and skip with hope as your resurrection witnesses. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Have you ever been wrapped in love? Now, there are many ways to be wrapped in love. And if I were to ask each individual how you were wrapped in love, the answers would be as individual as there are people in this place. I could name so many ways that I have been wrapped in love in my life. Two concrete ways are these beautiful handmade pieces of art. This one was made by Hazel Pennington, a member of our church in London. She lived in an apartment above Bob's Men's Store in downtown London. She retired from Bob's at one time, and they took very good care of her as well as their family. And one day, Hazel called me and said, I have a gift for you. Would you come by? And I did. And she gave me this lovely piece of art. And then shortly after our Nimble Fingers ministry of our church began, they gave me this beautiful lap blanket. I'm not sure who made it, but both pieces reside in my office. And there have been times of great difficulty that I have been able to to grab one of these beautiful pieces and just wrap them around me and be reminded of the love that surrounds all of us. In today's story from Acts, we hear about Tabitha, or Dorcas, her Greek name, who obviously had wrapped many people in love throughout her life. Our stories define us, don't they? They tell the world who we are. Rachel Held Evans notes, we know who we are. Not from the birth certificates and social security numbers assigned to us by the government, but from the stories told and retold to us 
by our community? Should the time of our birth certificate be off by a minute or should it be lost altogether? It wouldn't change what's truest about you. That no matter what, you are loved. We actually have multiple stories going on in this short story in Acts. One is Peter. In today's story, we see a small snippet of Peter's ministry and travels following the resurrection. As the word got out about Peter's ministry, two men found him and asked him to travel to Joppa because a female disciple named Tabitha had died. Now, let's pause for just a moment because it is imperative that we notice something new is happening in this Joppa experience. This is the only time in the New Testament that you will find the feminine form of the word in Greek for disciple. We infer from this that the writer of Luke Acts felt it was critical to demonstrate that even before Peter arrived in Joppa, God's Spirit was already at work stirring things up and creating new possibilities. This is what happens throughout the book of Acts and here we are shown that women could be disciples as well. So much for the idea that women shouldn't teach or preach or serve in the church. Furthermore, we realize this female disciple named Tabitha was such a significant part of her community that when she died, two men came to Peter to bring him to her house. And when he arrives in that upper room, he sees the women weeping, showing him the tunics and other garments Tabitha made for them. She was given them the cloak of salvation A garment of protection from all that hurts and harms. And after Peter listened to their stories, how powerfully Tabitha had cared for him, he asked the ladies to exit the room. He knelt by Tabitha's bed and prayed. And he said, Tabitha, rise up. And she did. And what happened next? Well, death does not have the final say. Because Tabitha's eyes open and she sits up. There is power on the loose that breaks even the bondage of death. Peter's bold words through the power of Christ restores the widows in this marginalized community that lives at the beck and call of powers beyond their control. They are pushed into the flow of history. And we know their stories. You see, Jesus transforms the very structures of life and death. Yet it is clear the stories like this one that receive scant attention are the exact place where the eyes of faith rest. And these stories of untold lives, these little stories about people whose names sometimes we can barely pronounce, are stories about social systems of paralysis and death rendered null and void. These stories are centered on the words, arise, get up, and nothing, I mean nothing, is ever the same again. Yet Tabitha's healing was not simply... For her alone. God's healing is never only for the individual affected. In scripture God's healing always ripples out into the larger community. Healing others with the fresh possibilities of the gospel. For those others hear the stories of how God is at work in the world. And this is exactly what happened in Joppa. Tapitha's healing meant the widows would have their caregiver again. And in that addition to that life-sustaining gift, word got out that God had done something spectacular. As the writer of Luke's Acts concisely puts it, many people believed in the Lord. Well, in our time, there are many stories that are untold, are brushed aside. 
There are Tabitha-like servants all over this world. Maybe you have heard of the story of Tabitha and a 10-year-old boy, Xavier Elliott, from Phoenix, Arizona. Xavier and his family lived in about six homeless shelters after his dad came back from Iraq. The U.S. Army veteran came home with war from PTSD and the family struggled to stay on their feet. Alexander's mother taught him how to sew. And now they are no longer homeless. Xavier is incredibly grateful for everything that he has. And he wants to use his good fortune to help kids whose families are still struggling. So he's using his own money and free time to sew new clothes, which he plans to donate to shelters around Arizona. He wants to help other kids who were in the position that he once was. Tabitha lives on in an art professor, Michael Swain, who sets up his sewing machine on the sidewalk in downtown San Francisco, mending the clothes of anyone who needs it, mainly the homeless. His mission is to mend the neighborhood, literally mend the neighborhood. Stitch by stitch, he repairs the fabric of his community. All for free. And I wonder, I wonder what Tabitha, that first woman explicitly called a disciple, did to merit being called a disciple. I think it was because she saw people in need and she helped them. She wrapped people in love. The love that she had come to know Through her faith in Christ. Anne Lamont tells in her book, Bird by Bird, about an eight-year-old boy that had a younger sister who was dying of leukemia. He was told that without a blood transfusion, she would die. The parents explained to him that his blood was probably compatible with hers, so he could be a blood donor. If he gave a pint of his blood, she would live. So he thought about it overnight, whether he could give his blood or not. And the next day he went to his parents and he said, yes, I want to do it. The family went to the hospital and when he was put on a gurney beside his six-year-old sister, both were hooked up to the IVs and a nurse withdrew a pint of the blood from the boy, which then was put in another IV in the girl. The boy lay on his gurney in silence as the blood dripped into his sister until a doctor came over to him and asked how he was doing. The little boy opened his eyes and he asked, How soon until I start to die? He thought by giving his blood to his sister that he would no longer live, but she would. Such innocent trust and such love. It's a remarkable moment. And how often do the world's Tabithas, the ones who give beyond comprehension and quiet engagement, step forward and trust that their lives are here to make a difference. And then there are our stories. Many stories that are untold and unwritten, but have touched lives just as significantly as Tabitha. The story of Tabitha's giving continues to echo in those who have given and those who continue to give their life in service because they see the life of Jesus. And I pray that we can leave a legacy wrapped in love as powerful as Tabitha's. 
Let us choose to fully live out our discipleship to represent Christ to one another and to the world with courage, with tenacity, and with the hope-filled boldness that God's Spirit will give so that we can show just exactly how expansive God's grace can be. Can you imagine what God could do with us. May it be so. This is a table where we too can be wrapped in love, receive grace, forgiveness for our mistakes, and to be filled to overflowing with the blessings of God. No matter where we are, no matter what we've done, God meets us right here at this table. And so as we prepare to come to this table, I know that I give thanks for all of those in my life who have shown me what it means to be wrapped in love, who have shown me what it means to receive grace freely and to be forgiven when I make mistakes. We all have those people in our lives that walk faithfully and have wrapped us up in the kind of love that God calls us to share. So as we gather here at this place, let's remember them and give thanks for them and give thanks to God for Jesus who came to give us eternal life, love, and grace. Let's pray together. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as He blessed it, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread, drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Creator God, fill us with the presence of your spirit as we take this bread and this cup in remembrance of your son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who calls us to get up, to live, and to seek out the welfare of others and help them in our daily lives. Guide us to grow as disciples ourselves. In his name we pray, amen. Take the bread. Drink the cup.
places at all times. And as we go from this place, reminded of the love that wraps us up and the grace that is freely given to us, may we follow God's call into the world, and may we do the same. Amen. 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 